Now, an international team of scientists working on a project in the United States say that they have discovered strong evidence for the existence of a new force of nature. They say that some subatomic particles, called muons, don't behave in a way predicted by current theories of physics. Scientists believe they may have discovered a brand new force of nature at CERN's Large Hadron Collider, hinting at the fact that a new particle breaks the known laws of physics. More importantly, however, it shows just how much we don't know about the universe. For this, I want to introduce a theory that has largely been ignored, perhaps because of its implications on what we think we know about the beginning of the universe. Young Earthers and Old Earthers don't see eye to eye when it comes to the age of the Earth, obviously. Young Earthers take the Bible's timeline of creation literally, and date the Earth somewhere around 6,000 years old, while those who adhere to a much older Earth estimate the Earth to be about 4.5 billion years old. That's quite a gap. And according to the scientific community, all signs point to an old Earth. But what if there was overwhelming scientific evidence that the Earth was indeed 6,000 years old after all. What if the truth is more bizarre than we can imagine? Now before I jump into this, I want to point out that I'm a layman when it comes to science, and I have a very surface level understanding of physics. This video is not trying to prove the science behind the following findings, but rather start a discussion about its potential implications, if true. While I was thinking about the age of the Earth, I faintly remembered an Australian astronomer I had heard about a couple years ago by the name of Barry Setterfield, who was known for pushing an unpopular idea that the speed of light was slowing down. Now, I don't have a problem with unpopular ideas because our modern understanding of the world has been built upon ideas that were extremely unpopular, until, of course, they weren't. When Setterfield researched the history of scientists measuring the speed of light, he discovered 163 speed of light determinations over the past 300 years. What was interesting was the fact that throughout time, those measurements had become slower and slower on a consistent path. But what does light speed have to do with our discussion? Well, thanks to Einstein and his theory of relativity, we know that light speed limit affects more than how quickly we can see the light from our sun, which takes about 8 minutes for light to make the entire trip. In fact, the speed of light affects time as well. But let's back up a bit. E equals mc squared tells us that matter and energy are interconvertible, and that time is relative, depending on how fast you are moving and how much gravity is acting upon you. Relativity tells us that time can contract and expand for two observers moving at different speeds. In most cases, this discrepancy isn't noticeable. However, let's say you blast off into space and rocket through the cosmos at a super fast speed, like close to the speed of light. At this speed, things begin to get weird. You won't notice anything different, but your friends you left behind will be moving through time according to you much, much faster than you. So fast that you'd better return home before you kill them. Just kidding. But seriously, if you stay at that speed, for more than a few minutes, they will have aged maybe decades, perhaps even more. And when you return, they might already be dead. So what's the point? If his research is correct and light speed indeed has been slowing down ever since the Big Bang, we have to rethink everything we know about the timeline of our universe. Let's dive into some of the physics only briefly, however, because I don't want to lose you before I get to the point. According to the majority of scientists today, the fabric of the universe is expanding or stretching out. Consider a rubber band for a moment. When it is stretched, energy is invested into its fabric as potential energy. When the rubber band is released, that energy goes into its motion and it becomes kinetic energy. In a similar way that the stretching of a rubber band puts energy into its fabric, the expansion of the fabric of space puts energy into the vacuum and has become known as the zero point energy, which exists uniformly everywhere in the vacuum of space. But what's important is, when the ZPE is lower, time moves much faster through the vacuum of space. And Setterfield's analysis has shown that the ZPE was much lower toward the beginning of the universe when space wasn't as stretched out as it is today. Here he is now. As you have a look at the whole business with the ZPE, it turns out that our orbital time, the time it takes the Earth to go once around the Sun, this is unaffected by any changes in the ZPE. But the atomic clock ticked much faster when the ZPE was lower. And as a consequence, when the speed of light was, say, 10 times its current speed, the atomic clock ticked off 
10 years in one ordinary year. And, this, and light traveled 10 light years in one ordinary year. There's so much more to this theory, and I invite you to explore it for yourselves, as it's pretty compelling. However, I want to focus on its implications on the age of the universe. One of the major shocks Setterfield got during his decades of research was the results of working through the math within his theory. His research demonstrated that the conditions at the beginning of the universe showed light's speed was about 6 times 10 to the power of 11 times faster than what we measure it as today. That equates to 6 billion times faster. As a result, at that time the atomic clock, which we can think of like an underlying field that sets the minimum tick rate for everything inside of it, well it ticked off about 6 billion years in the time it would take just 4 days to pass from our current perspective. According to his math, the literal interpretation of the Bible's 6 days of creation was in fact more than plausible, it actually matched the math correctly. For this reason, Setterfield and proponents of his theory state that some within the standard scientific community have ridiculed it. However, what he has done, he says, is simply collect the data and present it. So if he's correct, that would mean that the Earth could indeed be 6,000 years old after all, but still have the illusion that it's 4.5 billion years old when geological and atomic measurements are taken today and calculated against a uniform history of Earth. I don't know what to make of this because I'm not a scientist, but it wouldn't surprise me one bit if it were true. We still know so little about the universe, as shown by CERN's most recent discovery of a possible new force never detected before. Imagine what else there is that we don't know. Comment below and tell me what you think about this theory. Is the Earth 6,000 years old, or is it much older?